Welcome to Impact, where immigrants and Americans discuss America today. I'm your host, Pamela Anchang. On today's show, we will be discussing how the immigrant spirit of entrepreneurship has impacted America today. Today, we have a special panelist. Dr. Jacqueline Wynn, or affectionately known as Dr. J, is founder and president of Dr. J's Natural. Mr. Michael Vitali Vernon, athlete and co-founder of Max Muscle Hawaii, very special to us is his military career in the U.S. Marines from 2010 to 2015. We are grateful for his service. And finally, we also have American Perspective with Mr. Larry Nehmer, co-founder of E! Entertainment Television and president and CEO, Metan Global Entertainment Group. This is going to be a show not to be missed, so stay with us on Impact with Pamela and Cheng. So guys, welcome to the show. Thanks. Larry. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me here. Fantastic. Dr. J. Thank you for having me, Pamela. Um, amazing. And Michael, the one and only. Good to be here. Thank you for having yes. me. Yes. Now, you know, you guys are selected specially to be here because you are seasoned in entrepreneurship. And uh, we want to <laughs> talk about <laughs> the impact of that entrepreneurship, you know, especially in the immigrant communities. Now, Larry, I know that you are a child of immigrants, Dr. J and Michael are immigrants and at different levels and stories are really interesting so let's talk about you know i read actually an article that um said that the native born population tends to be not as entrepreneurial as mm -hmm. the immigrants is that a fair assessment larry uh not my case or you know <laughs> not in, i grew up i mean my parents were uh just dead set that their kids are going to have a better life mm -hmm. than, than they did and they would work two jobs or three jobs, and they would literally beat entrepreneurship into you. <laughs> yes, yes. So, but I think that, Dr. J, if I'm right, it almost seems like 90% of immigrants would do run some kind of business. Definitely. I agree with that statement because I, I do feel like um, most of immigrants, or personally myself, I, I believe that um, because of, some political as well i came here because of political asylum mm -hmm. so for me it's the do or die approach right. either you make it in the in the american dream or you're gonna be just a labor worker for the rest of your life so if i'm escaping from my own um homeland for political asylum, then I want a better, I want a better life, and I want the American dream. So the American dream is definitely you have to have that entrepreneurship spirit in you in order to make it or break it. So definitely, so that's I'm a gonna go safe back to, statement. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Larry. Larry, is the American dream thing tied to entrepreneurship? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure it's tied to entrepreneurship. It's, it's tied to being successful okay. in whatever you do. I mean, my parents, I wouldn't say they were entrepreneurs. My father drove a Pepsi Cola truck. My mother worked for social services and stuff. And they just wanted their kids to have a better life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that also had to do with security. So, you know, their dream for me was to one day get a job in the government and get a pension and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was not entrepreneurship. It was not entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So, Michael. It would seem that immigrants, therefore, create a lot of opportunities through their entrepreneur spirit, but we don't hear much in, on the news. Is that, what do you think? Uh, yes, um, thank you for that question. Larry, I, I have to, I really appreciate your uh, standpoint. It's real good. Uh, in, um, in, in America, we don't see that on the news because there's other more important things to, to focus on, mm -hmm. such as fear media you know i learned early on as an immigrant coming from ukraine poverty coming from dirt i had no lights i had no food i had nothing mm -hmm. and when i for, when i arrived to america the first thing i noticed is that people here are secure right that's the right. that's the american process mm -hmm. security yes and and that security is created through fear through media that's why we don't see all these that we do see wonderful stories but not as often as we should no i believe that will drive the entrepreneurial factor higher people will be more ambitious and more driven because their spirits will be lifted so but i don't know yeah no but that i mean you make a fair point the question there will be larry 
because you're the American on this panel. So I'm going to defer to you for anytime I have to chastise the American <laughs> or celebrate them, we're going to come to you. So do you think that the lack of the media's representation of immigrants as impactful and contributing and creating all these opportunities, do you think that has influenced the narrative and what Americans generally think of immigrants as being a burden? Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think so, particularly, you know, if you, and there's really two Americas. There's New okay. York and L.A., and then there's the America that lives in between. Okay. I think if you come from New York, L.A., you're, your neighbors are immigrants. You're dealing with Im immigrants yeah. or non-Native Americans mm -hmm. uh, all the time, and so your understanding of it is very, very different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've worked all over the country, and, you know, I can tell you that, that that America that lives in between just is so susceptible to the, the BS that mm -hmm. that comes out, you know, about mm -hmm. immigrants are lazy and they don't want to work and they're criminals and yeah. rapists and stuff like that, which is total BS because if you really look at the history of this country, I mean, it's built on immigra immigrants. All innovation is coming from immigrants who have come mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you know, and see, here's my chance. I could actually succeed. You come from an, an environment where you're kind of regulated. It's like you, you're only going to be this. Yes. But now you come here and it's like, wow, I could be that, you know. And if I work hard, I can get there, and which you didn't have typically where you came from. So immigrants tend to take advantage of what America affords you yes. to do, where, you know, second, not second or third generation Americans, we're just used to, we're used to the security. Yes. Um, so we don't strive as hard or as much. Hey, if this is your first time visiting Team TV channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button here below and ring the notification bell so you will be notified when we post new content. My question to you, therefore, would be, I mean, look at you, you're so accomplished, you do a lot of great things. And we had a conversation earlier where we talked about even the undocumented immigrants pull, do pull their weight. They go to school and some of them run businesses. How does it make you feel when you don't, maybe we don't feel are not acknowledged as immigrants in general, regardless of being documented or undocumented? Definitely. Um, I think that um, a lot of um, the news nowadays is, especially, you know, our president, let's not open up that big can of worm, right? Is <laughs> 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 chastising, you know, the document or undocumented immigrants and, and for whatever mm -hmm. reason, um, I just feel like definitely America is the melting pot of immigrants. Yes. So there is no denying in that that we are contributing to the greater good of America, whether it's documented, undocumented. But personally, I do feel like with the five businesses that I own, yes, I give back to the community, mm -hmm. whether it's for America good or whether it's for my own kind good, but it's to these nonprofit organization that I personally believe in and that I wanted to associate with it. So whoever benefit from it is their luck, but at the same time, it's my way of saying, hey, I make it here with nothing in my um, hand. My mom is not educated. She works three jobs in order to afford and put my bro younger brother and I in um, private um, high school and then from there and definitely you know like um, what Larry was sharing with you guys is like definitely our parents instill us the spirits of higher education getting the education for yourself and yes. then from then on you can do whatever your dream that you want to do here in this country so for that I love her for for her lack of education, but for yes. for her hard work, for her dedication. So then when I look at her, I do not want to become a labor hard worker. Yes. I want to be an educated person. So for that, I, I, I finished what she wanted me to do, I then. obtain higher education. So I finished pharmacy school at the youngest age, 24. And then after that, I, I know I wanted to do some kind of entrepreneurship. Yes in me. So either open up a pharmacy or open up some kind of business. Well, she sort of like stopped me from doing that. And she's like, just be happy with what you're doing and, and getting a job. I'm like, 
no mom, no. <laughs> this is not me. This yes. is what I wanted to become. So then I would have to like hide out and obtain an, a higher education, meaning getting my real estate license, getting my MBA uh, course at night where she's asleep. So basically it's like the American mm -hmm. dream, the undocumented immigrants mm -hmm. or the documented immigrants, it's, it's whatever you make of it here mm -hmm. in Absolutely. America. And, and Americans or non-American or immigrants, you, you have to recognize that America is the melting pot it is. of immigrants. Absolutely. Michael, I, my question to you, therefore, would be maybe Americans don't know. Tell them what the impact that you think immigrants have on the fabric of this country. I mean, if you look at Google, mm -hmm. Tesla, Apple. Elon Musk is an immigrant. Wasn't Steve, mm -hmm. um, what's Steve his name? Jobs. Steve Jobs, a Syrian. Was he Syrian? Born? Persian. Persian. Mm -hmm. Okay. His adopted parents are Persian. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he was immigrant, if you think about it. What do you think has been the impact of immigrant entrepreneurship on this country? Oh, my God, there's so many it's like, where do we begin? Yeah, where do we begin? <laughs> I'll just, I'll just re right back to Hawaii, yes. where I live now. Mm -hmm. God bless. You know, thank God I can live there now as an immigrant, right, coming mm -hmm. from dirt. I can live there. Look at, look at Hawaii. There is melting pot you said asian cultures there we have go. spanish people there we have indian we have ukraines we have russian we have turkish and i've built friendships with these business owners yes. i go to, to the little coffee shop i have a friend that's a coffee shop they're italian now i love their espressos hey espresso hey you know <laughs> and i buy into their culture you know and i just love that yes and every day i meet different people from different cultures and that's what america is all about sharing uh, sharing ideas, you know, sharing ideas. Like Tesla, Elon Musk, I wrote a paper on him mm -hmm. in my MBA course, a long 20-page paper. And reading his story, it empowers me. And when I'm empowered and I do my thing, I'm kind of empowered the next generation. Absolutely. It's that simple. You know, I'm so glad that you didn't just relegate the, fa the, the, the contributions to just financial. The culture is part of it mm -hmm. that we bring. Larry... Maybe if you think about all the contributions, you think there's a there's room for the government to create. Um, somebody said a start of special visa for so that immigrants with entrepreneurial dreams can come here and pursue and actually create opportunities for them to be able to thrive. What do you think? Well, I think in <coughs> in earlier times that was possible. I think mm. now uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of obstacles <laughs> yeah. there because I don't yeah. I don't think our government or our president necessarily understands the value of what immigrants are brought here um, and stuff. But I, I think it, it gets back to there's a broader problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there used to be a time, you know, the Kennedy years, yes. where if somebody would say to you, Larry, what are you? Okay, I didn't say Democrat or Republican. I said I'm an American. I know. Um, those days are hmm. gone. It was thought of Camelot. It was every day was going to be better than the last. I mean, it's when we passed civil rights or women's rights and all, all kinds of things came out of that era. And if you look back at that time, what was the state of this country is we were ranked, I think, number one in terms of education in the world. Okay, now we're ranked 17th, I believe, hmm. which is crazy. Well, why do you that think that's the case? Like the, well, we, we let it go down, you know, our politicians let it go down. Okay. And I think it's that decline in education is really the only thing that allowed the political state that we have today is because educated people would never buy into the BS that's, true. that's going around there. So I think you really need to get back to this national agenda. Back in the 60s, when Kennedy was there, he said, we're going to put a man on the moon in 10 years. Yes. And everyone went, really? Yes. But the whole country mm. worked for one thing. Yes. We were going to put a man After on elections the moon were done, before we are the one Soviets country. were. Amen. Uh, we need to do that with education. We need to have a 10-year program and say, within 10 years, we are going to be the number one country in education, and then you'd never have a political situation like we have today, mm -hmm. because people are too smart would be too smart to buy the BS. You know, I wouldn't let you guys go without first of all asking. I need each and every one of you, Michael, starting with you, to tell us one practice that any budding entrepreneur ought to practice to be successful. Very simple. You have to be motivated, and you gotta teach yourself to be motivated every day. Get up and be motivated. Oh. Dr. J? Well, I read a lot of self-help <clears throat> books, so definitely I have tons to share. But <laughs> um, definitely you have to have 
good habits. Okay. So, for example, you know, waking up early in the morning is a must. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't be successful entrepreneur and you wake up at 9 or 10 a.m. So for me, 5 a.m. and then hitting the gym, that's a good habit. And then pray, definitely. The gym has to be part of it, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Larry. I would say follow your dream. Okay. It's, um, no matter how many times people tell you you're crazy, if you think that you're on the right track, don't be detracted mm -hmm. by, you know, the people who keep telling you, you can't do that, you can't do that. It's you got to be able to go for it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was really great advice. So more to come with you all in our next segment. And uh, this is Impact on KPFK 90.7 FM. I'm Pamela Anchang, and this is where immigrants and Americans discuss America today. Thanks for watching today's video. For more Team TV videos about immigrant lifestyles, click on the subscribe button here below and ring the notification bell so you will be notified when we upload new content. We upload new content every single week. See you next time on Team TV.